Afternoon, Central Escolar University. I am Sasu, the Community Outreach Program Advisor from the School of Optometry, and and we are your moderators for the first half of this webinar with its theme. This webinar is being organized by the Proactive Officers and Members of TEACH, which stands for Teachers Empowering Approach as Community Health Needs. And the general objective of this webinar is that at the end of this, the participants should be able to demonstrate awareness and appreciation of new perspectives in outreach engagements. Number two, to consider plans of developing outreach engagements that are sustainable. And now, to grace our webinar with her inspiring words, it's my honor and privilege to introduce to you our very own vibrant and energetic Madam President and Chief Academic Officer of Centro Escolar University. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Maria Cristina Di Padulina for her inspirational message, a virtual round of applause. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, it's really a pleasure to be with you and to be together with you. I am not sure 
uh, this is another, you know, another platform that we are using, the StreamYard. I am not very familiar with this. So I don't even see where, uh, how many uh, participants we already have, unlike in other platforms where we usually uh, see them. But uh, it's really a pleasure to be with you. I hope you are all doing well and uh, staying healthy, staying protected. That's the most important uh, um, thing to do at this point that we all <clears throat> do our work, yes. But uh, the number one um, activity for us and the number one concern for each and every one of us is to stay protected, stay well, stay healthy. So because uh, there's we don't we can't do anything, uh, we can't contribute to uh, any kind of endeavor if we ourselves are not uh, healthy. And uh, I'd like to congratulate uh, the community outreach. Uh, um, community, so to speak, of Centro Escolar University for conducting this uh, forum. Uh, it's very important for us to come together at this uh, particular time to determine um, what we can do uh, to, con to continue with the outreach program of CEU. Community outreach in CEU is a very strong component of the university. This is our extension program. And uh, in a university, there are supposed to be three um, main concerns. Number one, of course, is uh, instruction. The second is research. The third is extension, or in the case of CEU, we call it community outreach. But uh, we need to design uh, and a really uh, innovative uh, community outreach program at this point because of the pandemic that continues to be with us. And uh, by the predictions of many, this pandemic why, uh, will be, we will be in this condition for at least a year more because even if the con vaccine becomes available, it will not be available right away to everyone. So, and until that vaccine is available to everyone, uh, we just need to do our physical distancing, our keeping healthy, our mask and face shields and so on as our protection against this corona virus. So, um, it's really very exciting for you to come together. And uh, we really are very eager to find out what your ideas are for doing community outreach at this time. Uh, I'm sure you will be able to come up with uh, innovative uh, ideas and things that will really matter to the communities that we have been working uh, with and how, if we need to modify the communities that we have to be in touch with at this point, uh, I suppose that would be uh, all right. And I suppose that would be also part of the uh, concern that you will be addressing today. So let us continue to make community outreach in our university as robust as it has always been and uh, see to it that we can contribute to uplifting the welfare of our people at this time. And there are many, many needs of many, many people at this time. So we hope, we pray that we will be able to find our niche in community outreach at this point. So all the best to you. Uh, your concerns are uh, worthy of God's blessings because these are concerns for other people. And uh, we hope that whatever involvement you will have will also bring a good um, amount or a good degree 
of uh, satisfaction, if not happiness, to each and every one of you. Blessings to all, and thank you again for inviting me to be part of your program. Thank you. Our heartfelt thanks, Madam President. You know, Lee, there is one word that the President mentioned. Yes, Dr. You. And I appreciate it very much. The President mentioned about being innovative. Yes. That if we are innovative, we can still continue with our community outreach activities. Okay, so again, once again, Madam President, thank you very much. Truly, your words inspire us to engage ourselves with outreach activities even in times like this. Moving on. It is my honor and privilege to introduce our first speaker this afternoon. He is a professional and licensed social worker with solid experiences in the field of child protection, social welfare, psychosocial support, and case management. He has a master's degree in social work from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and Bachelor of Science in Social Work at Centra Escolar University, Manila. He is a former member of the Board of Social Worker and Professional Regulation Commission. He previously worked at National Housing Authority, Tondo Dagat Dagatan, Department of Social Welfare and Development Central Office. Hello, hello. Testing. Testing. Plan International and Save Children, United Kingdom, USA. He is exposed in virus child protection Can and social welfare, hello, work major hello. disasters like typhoons and social welfare. Yolanda, Pablo, Sendong, and many others. Thank you, thank you. You can hear me. Thank you. He had also experienced working in, in Indonesia during the Asineas Earthquake Rehabilitation and Recovery Program, and also in Beirut, Lebanon, for psychosocial support to children affected by the conflict in Syria. He is currently the Child Protection Specialist at United Nations Children's Fund, Philippines supporting the social welfare and parenting program in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. He is promoting the strengthening of social welfare system, social ser service workforce, digital and electronic social work case management system and advocating evidence based from parenting intervention to prevent and response to child protection concerns. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome our speaker for today, Mr. Jesus Jess Espar. Let's Hello. give him a virtual round of applause. Okay. Good afternoon. Hello, can you hear me? Because I cannot hear anything. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Um, okay, is it clear? Sir Dinig po. Yeah, yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon po, and thank you for inviting me in this uh, webinar. And uh, thank you to uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Padulina, Christina Padulina, for, for this uh, opportunity. And I uh, would like to share uh, my uh, presentation. I understand I have 30 minutes plus 15 minutes, so I may request the, the support to please uh, share the screen so that we can start. Uh, but before that, uh, maybe we have a uh, Mentimeter, Mentimeter uh, created by Lee. Let's start with the Mentimeter first. There are two questions there. Can we present the Mentimeter, please? Let's try that. Okay. How do you feel today? Yeah. Pwede po tayong yeah. sumagot. Uh, can, can we answer that? Uh, I think that this is a mentimeter that you will write down your responses to the uh, uh, chat box and then we will have some answers. Maybe Lee can help uh, for the instruction. 
Because I yeah, cannot how do hear, you feel today? I hear you, Lee. No sense. Anyway. Yeah, we are very excited, sir. Yeah, we are very excited. By putting a uh, like this. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Can be excited. Can be happy. Happy. Yeah. Yes, okay. Happy. happy. Okay, more answers, please. So then let's see. Is a poem sumagot happy? Let's try yeah. the other one. Meron pa po ibang sagot? We might be experiencing some uh, yeah. stress. Oh. Stress. Yeah. Okay. Motivated. Wow. Okay. Motivated. More answers, please. Let's see. Feel good. Wow. Feel good. Okay. Relax. <laughs> good to hear that people are relaxed, happy, motivated. What else? Okay. Ina pa po. Yeah. Let's try uh, some answers pa, no? Let's see. Positive uh, messages says excited. Okay, good. Excited. Excited, yes. motivated, happy, relaxed. Okay. Against one stress. Okay. Yes. Anim na po yan. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Six. Let's uh, wait for one more. Okay. Yeah, good. At least okay. more positive answers. Excited. Okay. More positive yeah. than the negative I, answers. I think, the, yes. uh, yeah. Okay. So this is yeah. the Mentimeter. Uh, Dinry po natin yan. And then it looks like that. Marami pong pwedeng sumagot. And it's a collage that uh, can give us a uh, picture of how people feel or what people are uh, feeling at the moment. Okay, yeah, that's it. Yeah, more people yeah. are responding now. Okay, dumadami na po, maganda po yan. yan. Positive okay. answers. Yeah, more on positive, sir. Okay, good. Yan. Yan. Brilliant, okay. grateful, now, relaxed. I think we can move to the next question. Lee, uh, yeah. can you show uh, the next question, please? The next question. Yan. How are you coping during this time this of COVID-19 pandemic? Write a word or two. Pos possible under is urban gardening, arts and crafts, etc. So, ano pong ginagawa ninyo? How do you cope? Oh, online business. Yes. Online business. Ah, okay. Yes. Ah, maganda yan. Online business. Yan. I think there are some like, faculty and no? staff right now. Additional income. Ano po po additional iba? income during this pandemic. Online, online games. Game. Wow, ah, online okay. games. Yes. Okay, good. Online games. What else? Ano po po iba? Sleeping. Ah, Sleeping. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. And of course, and very important. Modules. It's making modules. Thousand piece puzzles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ah, ano po iba? Isa. Sleeping. Yeah. There are so many times okay. to spend. Mabasa yung iba. Yeah. Wow. Pre okay. Prayer and Bible prayer reading. Prayer and Bible reading. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's good. So you can see, no? Ito po yung Mentimeter. Nakakatuwa siyang tignan. At kasi may mga sagot na uh, lumalabas yan. Okay. Once, watching Netflix. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's good. That's interesting. Okay. Yes, sir. And you can see uh, workout. Cooking. You can see dif different responses. Okay. Good. Okay. So, I guess we got a picture more or less of how we feel and how we cope. Yung napaka-importante po kasi nung maintindihan natin, malaman natin how we feel about uh, our week. Time well spent. Okay. And thank yeah. you, no? Thank you, Lee, for that yeah. Thank meter. you, sir. Now we proceed to the PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, can, can you present the PowerPoint, please? Okay, thank you. I made you slowing down, no? Okay. Okay, yeah, good. Okay, so this is my PowerPoint. Uh, let's start the discussion. Next slide, please. We move to the next slide. Now, this is the introduction. Uh, we'll have the basic introduction now. The, <clears throat> these are some of the challenges. I will not uh, discuss this one by one, but I just would like you to see. Uh, now I cannot see the PowerPoint. 
Ah, uh, maybe you can just show the PowerPoint. It's okay. Ah. Uh, Yeah, just yeah, just show the PowerPoint. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Nakikita niyo po ba ang PowerPoint? Can you yes. see it? Yeah. Yes, sir. Medyo medyo challenging ng konti tong ano, StreamYard, no. <laughs> Let's see, no. Ah, uh, nakaiba to sa Zoom eh. Okay. Now, these are the list of some challenges faced by children and adolescents. When you say adolescents, these are the teenagers during ECQ, during DCQ, MECQ. Importante kasi uh, kasi close ang school, something like that. Monday pa mag-start ang public school, but private schools are already open. Limited activity in the home, lack of rhythm, lack of balance. Actor activity is limited, limited contacts with friends. And ma- lots of time watching TV or playing gadgets, no? walang face-to-face gimmick with barkada, things like that. They lack sleep or not enough sleep, not enough sunlight. No? And then re- some relief supplies are or mostly commo- no dealers and can do so. So all these things. But what is important is children, they, they, they have feeling of fear, exposure to stress and psychosocial, psychological fatigue, the home environment and exposures to fake news, current events and realities. The next slide, please. Takes a while, no? To, to see the next slide. Okay. Ito naman po, these are challenges of parents kasi kailangan natin maintindihan. Um, what are the challenges of parents? And most of us here are parents, meron tayong anak, whether yung anak natin maliit pa o nag-aaral na sa elementary or kinder or uh, high school or colleges. No? So I will not uh, uh, roll it down one by one. You can just see, maaaring marami pa kayong ibang concerns or challenges no but these are most of the uh, challenges because there's no cash things like that highly vulnerable fear things like that and parents also are uh, very much stress okay and what is more important is the big challenge is how to handle manage the uncertainties difficulty uh, and also how to be how to be more resilient in facing the realities of times next slide now I want you to look at this because in 2015, um, the government supported by UNICEF conducted this study on national violence study. It's a national business study on violence against children. This is important to understand that 80% of children and young people uh, experience any form of violence in all settings. Okay, That is why it is important for us to understand this, why violence against children is an urgent concern in the Philippines. And then the next slide will tell us Uh, boys and girls at, at high risk uh, because of this study. Okay, uh, so babayt na laki po sa ating bansa ay batay sa pag-aaral ay both at risk. Okay, now let's look at the next slide. Next, uh, press, pre- please press. Uh, ano po ba yung violence? Okay, one more. Uh, there should be three. One more. Thank you. Now, ano yung violence against children? Press, please. One, two, three. So basically, this is physical, this is psychological, and this is online sexual exploitation or cyber violence. So napakalagang maintindihan natin ito. Unti-unti natin uh, uh, i-dissect yan. No? The next slide will tell us more. Okay, next, please. 80%, na-mention na natin yan, but you will, if you will notice, uh, uh, children experience physical, psychological, sexual, uh, bullying, cyber violence, and any form of collective violence, and whether the violence happened in the home, school setting, workplace, community, or even during dating. Okay, the next slide, please. Now look at this. This is physical abuse. If you look at the chart, um, it says that home, mataas po yung uh, based on the research, physical violence in various settings, 60, 64 more percent. No? Because phys- physical violence in the, is the common form of violence against children in the Philippines. Okay. The next slide will tell us. 
psychological violence is experienced in the, the child's own home and in school. Yan. Psychological violence in various settings. Again, if you look at the chart, mataas din yung home. Okay? Then followed by the school. So just to give us an idea. And then the next slide will tell us about sexual violence naman. Now, look at this. This is interesting. If you look at the chart, okay, mataas po yung home and mataas din yung community at mataas yung dating. Okay, look at that, no? So, dating activity, merong sexual abuse. And then take note, no? This is for both boys and girls. Okay, next slide. Now, this is the drivers of violence against children. Poverty, kahirapan ng buhay. And then, substance abuse or substance use and then social mores, norms. Corporal punishment is widely accepted. Children are expected to show absolute obedience and should behave according to the expectations of parents. Now, poverty. In the context of the COVID pandemic, lalong tumindi ang kahirapan ng buhay. Dahil kung maraming walang trabaho, uh, many people lost their jobs. Yeah, so it's very difficult. It is a very difficult situation in most people. And then the next slide will tell us ayan po, no? Iba-ibang klase ng child protection concerns or cases. It is about children exposed to sexual abuse, physical abuse, and then children in conflict with the law, which is connected with, for example, violence in ECQ or violations of curfew, children with disability also, ano, uh, very much challenged, and online sexual abuse and exploitation of children. Now, the next slide will tell us, okay, now take, take a look, look at this, no? This is just last January 2020. Daily time spent with media. So look at, this is Philippines, no? Uh, nine hours, 45 million. This is using internet. Three hours with three million, this is using social media. Three hours, 49 million, watching television. Then two hours, around half million, is about listening to music, streaming services. And one hour, 33 million, using games uh, and then ac in internet access through the games. So, yan po ang scenario ng Pilipinas. And that's why we have to better understand that mar marami po ang gumagamit talaga ng uh, internet activity and then gadgets in, in the Philippines. The next slide will tell us five out of ten children experience cyber violence. Um, pagka po ang bata in exposed sa cyber violence, ang mga nangyayari pong uh, sitwasyon, pwede ang mga bata ay nabubuli in the uh, cyber space, no? Pwede rin silang nakakakita o na-expose sila sa mga unhealthy uh, visuals, unhealthy video, and also they are highly prone to becoming a victim of online sexual exploitation. So, and these are very, very damaging to the child's development. And the next slide will tell us about child online protection. And what is it all about? Okay, preventing and responding to online violence, abuse, and exploitation as part of upholding children's rights. So, napaka importante tignan natin to. Now, I'll stop for a moment. I want you to see a video. Uh, ito pong video na ipapakita natin, medyo po disturbing sa maring sa ilan sa atin, no? Uh, but this is reality, and uh, uh, I would understand that. Some of you may be disturbed. No? However, this is very important for us to see and to better understand. Maiksi lang po tong video na ito. It's entitled, uh, it's, it's done by UNICEF, and uh, let's watch it. No? I hope maganda yung sound. No?
Okay, and thank you. Now, we move to the next slide, please. So, basically, um, that, that video uh, will tell us about uh, online uh, protection of children is an important concern that we have, we need to to uh, uh, take note. No, okay. The next slide uh, is telling us how are Filipino children abused and exploited. So you see, uh, the National Study on Online Sexual Exploitation and Exploitation of Children in the Philippines found that many cases poverty was the primary motivation for children and families to get into the situation. Older children are promised uh, education or money by foreigners who want their sexual pictures or, web or uh, videos. Younger children are lured into perpetrators' uh, homes with, um, uh, yeah, candy, say, yeah. And then other, uh, these are the, the modus operandi of the, big, of, of the perpetrator. Are Filipino children abused and exploited online? Well, uh, because also uh, Filipino children can understand basic English. That's why uh, children at, uh, are at high risk now, because they can communicate. Okay, the next slide. What is online sexual exploitation of children? Well, basically, uh, while the internet promises many benefits to children, like what it, it helps in the classes, it can also be the most dangerous place for them. Napaka dangerous po ngayon ng internet, lalo na kung hindi guided ng magulang o ng adult, or, or kahit guided, pero yung mga adult din ang siya minsan nagiging uh, kasabot na as perpetrator. Uh, okay, and the uh, issue remains to be an alarming global concern with millions of children having experience being forced to perform uh, sexual acts online or being blackmailed to sexual purposes. So, ganyan po ang sitwasyon. Uh, and then, in the Philippines, one to two children is a victim of violence on the internet. According to the government study, the worst forms of violence on, is online. Uh, and this is the online sexual abuse and exploitation. So, uh, very alarming po ang, ang situation ngayon. Next slide. So, um, perpetrators po, uh, these are usually foreign, uh, from foreign countries, and there's also a facilitator which uh, uh, kakonchaba nila or kakaalyado nila. Okay, the next slide. And these are the victims. Babies as young as three months old were reported to be victims of online sexual abuse and exploitation. Uh, it's, this is a very sad reality. They come from poor communities and live with the families who are desperate to earn money. These children are forced by their parents, relatives, and neighbors to perform sexual acts in front of the camera. Then the next slide. So what's happening? So th this is a trending. Uh, more, and, more and more Filipino children are being abused and exploited in the internet. And in 2018, the Department of Justice recorded the such number of more than 500,000. And in 2019, more than 400,000. We have seen a 260 plus increase in the, uh, in, in the cases since the start of the lockdown. So, Tomas Boyan. Okay, next slide. So, what can we do? We need to take action on this. We need to be more, be the voice of the children. Uh, who need help, teach children on how to stay, stay safe online, demand accountability of government, and then stay safe online, follow Safe Your Kids PH on social media, and share our content. So I can give you the link of the Safe Your Kids, which is a uh, project uh, supported by UNICEF. And this is how to report. These are the numbers. Okay. The next slide, please. And this is, you can visit and go to this, uh, saperkids.org for more information about online sexual exploitation. Next slide, please. Now, how do we protect children? And then move on to the next slide. Um, 
that gives us um, a UNICEF has a project called uh, Masayang Familia. This is a parenting program we, in partnership with Ateneo de Manila University. The, the, the group is called Parenting for Lifelong Health Philippines. And this is uh, being supported also by different organizations worldwide and also with DSWD as the lead agency. And the next slide will tell you about uh, COVID-19 increased the risks and challenges of families. So these are the, we have mentioned a little bit about this, which is financial problem, stress, uh, support system, estimated 1.58 billion children out of school because parents are doing 24 seven parenting and then maltreatment of children and online uh, risk, uh, particularly with low income uh, groups. And then the next slide will tell us Next slide, please. Now, uh, COVID-19, uh, we have produced in coordination with our partner, uh, Ateneo de Manila, uh, parenting resources, meaning these are resources derived from evidence-based parenting lifelong health program. And this is the content is adapted to fit the context of COVID-19 in the Philippines because other countries are also doing the same thing and then they translate it in their own local languages. This is developed by UNICEF, WHO, CDC, USAID in the Global Partnership on Parenting, simplified for transportability across languages and contents and uh, relevant for, for also for non-COVID context. Okay, now let's move on to the next slide. Um, this is just uh, one of the parenting tips that you can access when you when you go to the um, parenting uh, website. One-on-one uh, -on -one time is about 20 minutes every day, uh, going down to the level of the child, and then allow the child to uh, initiate the discussion, no TV or telephone, and it has to be a happy moment. If you have two children, 20 minutes each child, so 20 plus 20, okay? So uh, if you go to the link, there are more specific instructions on how to do this one-on-one -on -one time. I cannot uh, uh, discuss that further because of time element. Now, next slide. Okay, another example of parenting tips is pakikipag-usap tungkol sa COVID-19. So, how can parents talk about COVID-19? So, yan po yung instruction, there's instruction, and there's the tips there. So, you can more or less have an idea being parents or caregivers on what to do, how to do it. Okay, the next slide, please. Paano bang gagamit ang mga mapa tips or masayang pamilya tips na, na nababanggit o makikuha ninyo? Uh, basically, there's this instruction, i-apply sa sariling pamilya, okay, and then ibahagi ito, and then abangan ang mga susunod na materials, webinars, sa training ng PLH MAPA. I will also share to you the link of the FB page of MAPA in the other slides. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, napakahalaga po ito, hindi po madali ang quarantine kasama ang mga bata. Nararapat na suportahan at purihin ang mga magulang. So, shout out to all the parents. Uh, ano tayo dyan? Kailangan eh, ganyan tayo. Okay? Kasi 24-7 ang mga magulang. Okay, next slide. Okay, ito. English version lang po to. Lockdown with kids is hard. Parents deserve praise. They are stars. So, kailangan siguro yung community outreach natin na balak natin gawin ay i-recognize natin po yung mga magulang. Bigyan natin sila na stars. Yan. Next slide, please. Ito po yung mga website, okay? Child protection website. Ikiklik nyo lang po lang yan. Marami po kayong makukuwang mga tips on parenting, on child protection concerns in the context of COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, next slide. Ito naman po, in case uh, meron pong cases sa community kung saan kayo mag-conduct ng outreach, ito po yung mga 
numbers, contact numbers ng authorized authority. These are uh, legit authorities that pwede pong tawagan. Okay, the next slide. Hotline po yan and helpline. And then uh, telephone hotline then, another helpline. These are other numbers, NBI, uh, SMART, okay? And then anti-trafficking in persons division. All these numbers is very, very important. Okay, the next slide. Now, this is my recommendation. This is just initial recommendation. No? Uh, if you reach out to community awareness raising, uh, now, of course, it has to be online platform. Engage the children and the teens, the mga teenager, introduce through online platform. For example, arts and crafts, music, uh, singing, playing musical instrument, things like that, recording, reading storybooks, poems, writing, diaries, or journals, things like that. Share parenting tips to parents and caregivers, guide parents. Then hopefully if you can get feedback from, from the leaders of the community, you're reaching out. Encourage parents, adults, children to report cases of child abuse and exploitation to proper authorities. You can share all the links or the numbers. You can come up with a, a platform on that. Guide children, families, and parents and parents to be more resilient. Ito po yung kailangan natin. Uh, more than to being more healthy, uh, more uh, uh, taking care of your health, uh, is being more resilient. Encourage parents to attend webinars on parenting. I can link you to that. Example is Ako Para Sa Bata. This is free webinar. Just go to this, bit.ly, Ako Para Sa Bata 2020. And this coming November, there will be like one, two, three sessions on parenting. This is very interesting. This is also supported by UNICEF. And then the next slide. I'm almost through. Okay. Uh, children are tired of being called the future. They want to enjoy their childhood free of violence now, especially during times of COVID pandemic. It's really very, very difficult times. But children, uh, sabi po ng mga bata yan, 2016 or 26 ago, pero it applies still un until now. Okay, this is written by uh, Paolo Pinero, who, who wrote uh, historically the children uh study on violence against children. Okay, next slide. I think uh, smiling, giving children a smile, giving uh, your people in your homes, in the community that you would like to outreach is an important message to provide positive messages to children. And then the next slide, please. Ayan, this, please like the FB page of Masayang Pamilya. Just go to Masayang Pamilya slash uh, dash PLH Philippines and you can get some additional tips on, on evidence-based parenting, uh, parenting tips. Okay, next slide. Uh, these are more uh, child protection website. You can just copy it and all my slides are with Lee, I gave it to Doc Cess also, and then uh, Engineer uh, Jennifer. So you can just download it from your uh, uh, website, or you can access it to them. And then the next slide, please. Well, thank you, Po. Uh, I think that the, that's the end of my presentation. Kung meron pong question. Salamat, Po. Wow, thank you so much, sir. Now I can hear you. So now many learnings, <laughs> insights, inputs that are very much needed in our present situation. Nibali, very timely yung topic ni sir. Yes, 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 my uh, doctor. You one of my of the topic that I also see is yung ako para sa bata, and that is COVID of the child against violence in the times of the, the disease. So that will be the series of seminar I also attended last last October one until November yes, twenty four. It's for free po. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially now, kasi tiba everything is online. Marami tayong oras sa social media, kaya importante to. So, Lee, let us proceed to our open forum. Yeah, and yes, I can see so many questions in our comment section from CEU Workplace and uh, Facebook and YouTube. So, can we proceed, Dr. Yu? 
Oh yes, ito nga, ito yung question number one, sir. Actually, you mentioned yung sagot dito, pero bubasahin ko yung question. Sabi dito sa question, how to cope up with the challenges faced by children? Sabi dito sa question, at least yung top three po na pwedeng pang cope up now that the children are facing these challenges during quarantine. Okay, thank you po sa question. Ang unang-una po, dapat mag-cope up yung parent, yung magulang o yung caregiver. Kasi kung masaya yung aura niya, magaguide niya yung bata. Kasi kung stress masyado yung parent, mahihirapan talaga siya. It's very, very difficult for, for the parent. Mother, father, kuya, ate, lolo, lola. So, the first step really is to, to find time to listen to the child and uh, allow the child to be more... The parents should have to be very creative and innovative. Very challenging po talaga yan. Uh, kasi ang hirap maglaro sa labas, bawal, restricted. Uh, even kung magpa-araw, restricted. Sa gabi, curfew. Okay? Tapos ang init. So, ang top three po dyan is listen to the child, uh, avoid uh, shouting to the child, yan. Uh, listen and be very, very patient. Talaga napaka-importante yan. And yung gamitin po yung ano yung one on one time learn how to do it go to the link and the link will tell you how to do the one on one time that's the, that's the technique and you will get to 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 practice that okay wala lang nga po tayong type eh uh, pwede sana pag-usapan ng mas malalim yan pero i i hope you can you can go to the link and and uh, uh, try to practice it madali lang po yung instruction doon thank you Okay, thank you sir. Ayan mga kapwa ko teacher, kung we na one-on-one -on -one natin ang ating mga estudyante, i-one-on-one -on -one din natin ang ating mga anak. Oh, sir Lee, question number two, meron na. Ayan, I have a question here. Sabi po dito, is violence still the one who threatens you to insult your parents? Ah, okay. Um, violence to threaten your parents, okay. Um, to insult your parents. Ah, uh, Hindi po yan. Hindi po yan insulting parents. No? Um, ang mahalaga po dito kasi, um, ang magulang ay naiintindihan. Una, if there is a feeling that a child is not feeling comfortable, for example, and the parent must be able to recognize whether the child needs parental support or guidance. Uh, and uh, it's very important that magbigay tayo ng inputs really sa mga magulang. And gabayan ng mabuti ang mga anak at nang sa ganun ay may iwasan at masiguro natin na proyektado yung ating mga anak. And at the same time, the dialogue, the essence of a dialogue, kaya po ngayon may one-on-one, -on -one, is really to have a better understanding para po mag-improve yung mother and child relationship including ang bonus niyan mag-improve din yung husband and wife relationship and relationship with other family members okay so it's always linked to the giving quality time to the child okay yeah thank you sir for your answer you. also it has something to do with republic act 7610 sir this is diba this we have uh, an act providing for stronger and special protection against the child abuse, exploitation, and discrimination. So, pwede po yung uh, basis natin para makita natin. Yun nga lang, we have, don't have enough time for this. Yan, yeah. Dr. Yu. I mean, meron tayong question number three. Sabi dito, Sir, pati po ba mga adolescents pwede mag-report against violence? Kasi yes, yung mention children. So, eto, yeah. adolescents. Yeah. Kasi sa, sa ating gabay, sa batas, pag sinabi yung children, this a uh, uh, below 18 so 17 pa baba. yes they can report uh, they can and then they can report uh, with uh, no, uh, recognizing confidentiality they can go to any of those numbers kaya kung, kung meron kayong outreach share nyo po lahat ng mga contact number dun sa outreach community and sila po yung magbigay ng guide magre-report sila dun like for example Barangay Council for the Protection of Children na barangay kung saan kayo may outreach, then the Barangay Council can can be the one to guide the children so that they can report. 
and they will not be uh, uh, you know uh, liable to that reporting kasi responsible by anybody can report uh, any case of uh, abuse exploitation and violence committed to a child and just one thing no napakahalaga din pagbigyan yung pansin natin yung mental health ng bawat isa sa atin kasi yung ngayon po, ngayon po talaga is uh, um, kailangan alagaan yung katawan, sapat na tulog, sapat na pahinga, nutritious food, iwasan yung maaalat na pagkain, things like that, more fruits, vegetables, and then uh, in a way, you know, being you know, to, to do exercise uh, just to make it a balance so that yung ating mental health ay ma- masuportahan natin. Okay po? Yeah. Okay, sir. Tama po yan. So, isang outreach activity namin yan is to share your number. So, kanino magre-report? Tama po yan, sir. Wow. So, paano ba, Lee? Ang dami pang questions. Anong gagawin yeah. natin? Yeah, and I think there are still more questions, but we don't have enough time kasi meron pa po tayong second speaker. Don't worry. All of your questions will be gathered and we'll try to get it back to you via email. We'll send it to the, Mr. Afar. Yeah, you can you can contact me. I can answer your question. Yeah, Dr. Yu. Okay. Yeah, Thank you, can... you, sir. Thank you once again. And at this point in time, sir, may we award the certificate of appreciation. Thank you. Central Escolar University, Manila, Makati, Malolos. Teachers Empowering Approach as Community Helpmates or Teach and support personnel outreach teams support present the certificate of appreciation to mr jesus far for sharing his knowledge and expertise as our resource speaker during the webinar on new perspectives in outreach engagements with the topic of advocating for the rights of children held on october 3 2020 via ce workplace Facebook and YouTube. Signed, Dr. Margarita E. Gray, President Teach. Ma'am Jennifer G. Keta, President Support. Dr. Lolita Pablo, the head of the Community Outreach Department. And Dr. Carlito B. Olaer, the Vice President for Student Affairs. A warm round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my Dr. Uh, Gray and Dr. Lolit Pablo. And to your team. Thank you. Yeah, we don't have much time. Okay, thank you, po. Yeah, salamat. Okay, that ends the first part of this webinar. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Penelope Sampana of the Marketing Communications Career Services and Placement section of the Malala's Campus. I, be, I will be one of the moderators for this afternoon. Together with me is my partner. Hi, I'm Dr. Ricardo Lampas from Central Escolar University, Makati. It's good to see uh, the so many activities uh, in the previous video that showcase uh, the so many uh, uh, community outreach programs of uh, the three campuses, Manila, Malolos, and Makati. Right, uh, uh, Professor Sampana? <laughs> and yes, now sir. I'm going to introduce our uh, second speaker for this afternoon. And uh, we are honored to have her to help us demonstrate awareness and appreciation of new perspectives in outreach engagements as she talks on the topic, innovative approaches in engaging young people amidst COVID-19. Professor Rio Grace Otara is a licensed social worker who ranked second in the 2008 social work licensure exam. She's a staunch advocate of women empowerment and gender equality. Her expertise is on the field of gender-based violence, prevention and response programming, both in development and humanitarian settings. She previously served as Gender and Culture Program Officer and currently serves as the National Youth Program Officer of the United Nations Population Fund. She's also a senior lecturer in the Diploma and Master of Social Work Program of the University of the Philippines Open University. As a social worker, she previously served as caseworker for refugees, asylum seekers, and migrant workers who experienced various forms of violence. She has been deployed to several disaster and humanitarian crises, leading rapid needs assessments, coordinating rapid gender assessments and analysis, and providing immediate life-saving interventions including the provision of psychosocial support interventions. She obtained her Master of Social Work from the University of Sydney and Master of Science in Gender Development and Globalization from the London School of Economics and Political Science. Let us all give a virtual warm round of applause from the United Nations Population Fund, Professor Rio Grace Otara. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat, sa ating um, viewers ngayon, um, CEU officials, uh, teachers, and um, members ng ating Teach and Support no? Outreach Program of CEU. So uh, thank you very much for inviting me in this very timely and very relevant event. So my topic um, this afternoon is about the role of um, women and young people in community empowerment. So. I divided my presentation into three. Um, actually, this is more of a compliment no, doon sa ginawa na ni Sir Jess na presentation from UNICEF, which is our sister organization. And um, in many ways, no, nag intersect yung work namin ni Sir Jess because I'm uh, working with adolescents and young people. So that's the program that I'm uh, managing in UNFPA. So I divided my presentation into three. So the first one is, um, uh, dadagdagan ko lang yung uh, statistics and data that uh, Sir Jess has already presented. So I'll be providing a gendered perspective no, on the impact of uh, COVID-19 to women, men, girls, and boys. Um, second part ng aking presentation is um, uh, more of the um, examples no, ng, um, how this gendered perspective is applied in outreach program um, and in humanitarian action in particular. And then the last part of my presentation will be about um, specific examples no, um, on how we innovate, how we innovated no, in terms of uh, reaching out to our target population, no, to the population that we serve, uh, especially during the context of COVID-19. So that long part is the presentation. So I'm going to share my screen now, and I'm going to present briefly. Um, okay, the first part of um, my presentation. Okay, can you see it, everyone?
Hello. Yes, can you see the presentation now? Okay. Um so I'll I'll be speaking about no uh, the data no dagdagan ko lang yung uh, sinabi ni Sir Jess kanina particularly uh, focusing on the gender impacts of COVID-19. So just a very quick introduction about the United Nations Population Fund. Um, we are the sister organization as well, UN organization of UNICEF, but um, we are focusing on sexual and reproductive health, and uh, we work to uh, you know achieve yung tinatawag namin na three zeros by 2030, which is the end of the Sustainable Development Goals. And um, that's a zero unmet need for family planning, a zero maternal deaths, and zero violence and harmful practices against women and girls. So that's the three uh, major mandate of the United Nations Population Fund. Now, um, Kanina, no, uh, Sir Jess presented yung data about uh, how children have been affected by COVID-19. What are some of the uh, challenges and uh, some recommendations on how to deal with these issues, uh, those issues that children are facing. So, uh, dagdagan ko lang siya, no, um, this is uh, the, the data that I will presenting quickly. Um, is based on two major uh, sources. So, one is uh, the gender um, inclusion assessment that we have conducted with um, the interagency, no, the gender-based violence subcluster. So it's uh, an interagency body composed of non-government organizations, CSOs, and government agencies. Um, so that's one of the major source of the data that I'm presenting. And second is on the study that we have conducted uh, together with the UP Population Institute on, you know, the the impact. Uh, projecting the impact of COVID-19 and the quarantine measures on family planning, on maternal health, and in uh, in general on reproductive health um, uh, rights. Okay, so um, as we have, you know, as we have experienced, I don't need to like uh, recall all the things that we have experienced. No, no, you know, we had the lockdown, we had difficulties accessing uh, information and services, mobility issues. But um, I just want to emphasize, no, na, based on the result of our uh, gender inclusive assessment that we have conducted nationally, um, the, the COVID-19 and, and the accompanying quarantine measures no, has different impacts on men, women, um, boys and girls. It's because we have, you know, we have different issues, we have different concerns, and we have different coping um, mechanisms when we are experiencing crisis. Um, medyo maingay po siguro in a while kasi parang bumabagsak na yung ulan dito sa aming probinsya. So um, I hope you can still hear me. Um, but I'm just informing you in advance kasi mukhang uulan na siya ng bongga-bongga. Okay, so kanina no um in emphasize ni Sir just then yung uh, situation ng young people how uh, young people are affected especially children and then I just want to add as well no yung um yung yung aspeto ng violence no uh, I'm, I'm uh, this was also mentioned a while ago but I just want to emphasize that um during this uh you know yung yung period ng community quarantine nag increase talaga yung cases no hindi lang ng online sexual exploitation and abuse but also um violence no, no uh, various forms of violence kasi can you just imagine if you are experiencing violence pre covid how much more no nung nang nakulong ka dun sa bahay mo together with your perpetrator so you have no access to information you can't go out no meron din kasing mga uh, communities na um nagbigay sila ng uh, quarantine pass, no? So, usually, binibigay ito automatically sa head of the family. And yung konsepto natin lagi ng head of the family is male. So, hindi makakalabas yung babae, no? How can the victim survivor of violence report or even go out of the house kung wala siya nung um, community quarantine? In some cases naman, and in some communities, automatically binigay yung community pass doon sa kababaihan bilang nandun yung perspective na ay babae kasi yung natural caregiver, natural provider ng you know uh, care sa family. So doon naman in that situation, medyo bumigat no yung uh, care work na binibitbit ng mga kababaihan. So yun yung mga um, different situations that uh, men and women were facing during the COVID-19. And um, also I wanted to highlight no uh, itong 
uh, situation natin which is already a national social emergency. So ayan, medyo maingay na yung ulan. <laughs> so medyo lalakasan ko na lang yung aking bosses. So, I'll try to use as well. Um, oh my gosh. Can you hear the rain? Medyo malakas po ano. Okay. Ayan. Okay po ba? Okay yung audio? I couldn't see kasi the, the comments, no? Kung meron man. Kasi uh, I am presenting my screen. But I hope you can still hear me. Wait lang po. Okay. Itong ating uh, <laughs> new reality. No? Everything is heard. May mga aso, may pusa, may manok, etc. So, anyway. Uh, I also wanted to highlight this. No? Kasi uh, pre-COVID situation, mataas na yung uh, cases natin ng teenage pregnancy. And this is one of uh, the advocacies that I'm very passionate about. Because we are, you know, in the Philippines, we are the highest. No, We have the highest adolescent birth rates among ASEAN member states. And in fact, um, in 2019, this was declared as a national social uh, emergency because one in five girls is already a mother by age 19. So, ganun kadami yung um, kabataan na nagbubuntis. And COVID-19, no, this is based on our study with UPPI, it is expected that 18,000 more teenagers will get pregnant because of COVID community quarantine induced service reduction by the end of 2020. Um, mahirap na kasi yung access ng mga kabataan eh, pre-COVID, no? pre-COVID, mahirap yung access nila to adolescent sexual reproductive health. And because of COVID-19 and the quarantine measures, um, mas lalong nahirapan no? yung access nito, lalo na yung ating resources ay talagang napunta doon sa COVID-19 response. Um, in fact, itong 18,000 is, is a very conservative um very conservative estimate, no? Dahil uh, based din ito sa 2017 na uh, National Demographic and Health Survey data. But um, uh, I'm sure uh, this is bigger than, and you know, I mean, mas mataas yung ating ini-expect na teenage pregnancy because of um, quarantine induced service reduction. Um, moreover, no? Yung sa, sa side naman ng maternal health, gusto ko lang din siyang i-emphasize na um, I'm sure nakikita nyo ito sa news, uh, madami yung mga buntis, no, nanganganak, uh, manganganak na hindi nabibigyan ng room sa hospital, or they are really having a very difficult time accessing services and healthcare during this uh, context. So because of the quarantine measures no, na dala ng COVID-19, it is expected na magkakaroon tayo ng 60 um, additional maternal deaths per month of quarantine. So that's around 570 additional na mga nanay na namamatay uh, for this year. Okay? And then on unmet need for family planning naman, yung mga ayaw magbuntis pero nabubuntis dahil nga kulang sa, you know, kulang sa uh, access to information and services in family planning. Ang taas, no? That's 2 million plus additional uh, unmet need for family planning um, because of this uh, service reduction. So that's around 218,000 uh, women aged 15 to 49 na magkakaroon ng unmet need for FP and that means additional pregnancy. Okay? And one important thing na gusto ko i-highlight mo as a result of um, you know the COVID-19 and our quarantine measures is yung increase na intimate partner violence. So as I mentioned a while ago, uh, Ang hirap, no? Ang hirap ng situation ng mga kababaihan at batang babae at mga kabataan, no, na sa, uh, na mga kalalakihan kasi violence is, um, you know, affecting men, women, girls, and boys. Um, lalo na during the quarantine period. So, dahil walang access to services and information, ito yung uh, projection, no, that there will be an additional 12,000 plus, no, na intimate uh, partner violence because of COVID-19. So, ganun siya ka, um, ganun kalala, I may say, yung uh, impact, gendered impact, I would say, ng, ng COVID-19 and our quarantine measure. So, that's a, uh, you know, just to put uh, the situation in context. Now, na, um, of course, we are affected by COVID-19, but this crisis is not gender neutral. No? Um, it's affecting women and girls. Na mas because of the 
um, pre-existing inequalities na meron sa ating society. Okay. So, um, I would like to share to you a video that we have developed um, early this, uh, during the lockdown here, you know, just to raise awareness on uh, the violence that women and girls are facing and how to, you know, to, to reach out to authorities and service providers to address that issue. So, I hope narinig niyo siya. Kasi kanina during the presentation, you said just nawala yung audio. So I'm not really sure how how we can um Um let me know if you can hear it. Um please uh voice out no kung may audio yung narinig niyo na Good. Professor Otara, we are not seeing the video yet oh, okay. on the screen. Wait a moment. I'm going to share. Ayan. Can you see it na po ba? Not yet, ma'am. Uh, How about uh, uh, Wait. Ayan. Uh, okay. Almost. Ayan. There you go. Okay. Great. Let me know if there's, a, if there's an audio. If you can hear the audio. No audio as of now. Perfect. How about that? None, ma'am. Meron na po? No audio. None, ma'am. No audio, ma'am. Paano kaya mag-share ng audio sa ano? stream yard? But we are able to see the subtitles. Okay. Wala pa din pong audio, no? Wala pa, uh, Professor Tara. Perhaps because uh, your uh, your audio is connected to your headphone, only you can hear it. If you can remove your uh, headset from uh, from from the computer, Walang audio. None, none yet.
Anyway, the video is uh, very graphic and uh, there are subtitles and uh, I believe our uh, viewers uh, uh, in Facebook, in Workplace and in YouTube can uh, uh, grasp uh, the sense of urgency in the video that was uh, shown to us. Um, can you hear me now, Po, clearly? Uh, yes, Professor Ataro, we can oh. hear you clearly now. Yes, Po. So, um, uh, that was the first part of my presentation. I can I can share to you later on, no? and we can also share sa ating mga um, viewers and participants sa webinar na ito yung presentation so that you can access the references and the links no, to the videos, the, uh, the video that I presented. So, um, I'm very sorry for that. There, uh, there was some problem no, with the, uh, I'm not sure how to, to share the audio in the stream yard. Um, but anyway, um, definitely you can uh, access that video in YouTube. The, the title of that is Katok, no? Katok, like, nothing. <laughs> so, okay, I'll proceed now to the second part of my presentation. So this is really more of the, um, you know, the, the tools or the approach and how we can ensure that we are highlighting the roles of uh, women and young people in the community. And, you know, how paano natin siya mapapalitaw. Not only the rules, but also, you know, the, the different concerns, um, uh, barriers to services that uh, women and girls face. And also, ano yung, um, how can we ensure that our community outreach in particular is, is uh, responsive no, to the needs of um, the different population in our community. Kasi hindi naman siya homogenous, di ba? We know that uh, very well. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, okay. I hope you can see it. So I'm presenting my second uh, presentation. So these are uh, three very short presentations. So I think I have like 10 slides for each. So what is the, um, ano yung ating approach? No? Why an understanding of gender is uh, very essential no, to outreach programs and humanitarian action. So um, I will not show you the video anymore, but um, definitely you can access this as well in, in YouTube. So this is about the tsunami that happened in Sri Lanka way back in 2003. This is quite an old video, but um, napaka-comprehensive niya no? in terms of... Uh, explaining why there is a need for us to have a gendered perspective when we do our humanitarian work or our um, outreach programs in the community. So um, you can view that later, but um, the summary is that, uh, ito yung gusto kong emphasize no? Na, uh, as I've mentioned a while ago, no, yung humanitarian crisis and community issues ay hindi siya gender neutral. So nakita natin yung sa data din kanina no, na, uh, how men, women, girls, and boys are uh, affected differently because of the, you know, the different gender roles that are assigned to us uh, even before crisis. And um, hindi na ito bago actually, no? Um, but for some, perhaps this is new, but hindi na ito bago yung pagkakaroon dapat ng gender lens sa ating trabaho, sa ating programs, outreach uh, work, ay uh, dapat naka-integrate na siya uh, ngayon pa lang because um, as we know, no, uh, women and girls often face violence and exploitation, including trafficking, no, forced and early marriage, domestic violence, and rape, even before crisis. So, na exacerbate kasi itong mga situation na ito during a crisis situation because um, our community uh, support system are disrupted, our our protection mechanisms are uh, affected as well, no. Um, also. Uh, you know, in any crisis situation, nandun talaga yung uh, higher risk ng mga kababaihan to experience violence. Especially if we don't ensure na yung ating mga community outreach programs, yung ating uh, humanitar act, uh, humanitarian action ay hindi nakaakma no, doon sa different needs ng mga um, kababaihan kalalakihan. Very classic dyan, no, yung, even yung menstruation ng mga kababaihan. So, uh, very automatic kasi sa atin, no, pag may um, crisis go, uh, we will provide uh, food, uh, we will provide uh, clothing, you know, food and non-food items. Uh, nakakaligtaan minsan yung 
ang mga kababaihan, uh, girls and women, ay hindi tumitigil ang regla even during crisis situation. So, as sa ngayon, meron ng madaming effort on that, no? uh, especially in our government, meron na silang family kits sa DSWD, we have dignity kits as well in the EA and other UN agencies. Um, na nandun na yung mga, um, uh, you know, yung mga specific needs sa mga kababaihan on protection and um, hygiene. So, it's just one of the example. Another is, for instance, yung mga toilets natin, no? Pag nasa evacuation center ka, gaano kalayo ang toilet? Um, may, may maliwanag ba doon? Hindi ba mahaharas ang mga kababaihan pag nagpunta sila sa toilet? Uh, hindi ba sila marilip? May locks ba yung toilet natin, no? Na para hindi, you know, pasukin ng kung sino man yung ating mga kababaihan. Uh, in times of, um, you know, pag nasa evacuation center sila. So, yun yung some of the issues na hindi natin na, napapansin or na-overlook natin kasi hindi natin nilalagyan ng, uh, kumbaga, gender lens, no, yung ating uh, trabaho, especially, you know, in situations of crisis. So, as um, as I, as that video, yung video na ipapakita ko sana, um, ina-emphasize lang niya doon, no, na um, even prior the the crisis situation, na meron ng gender inequalities that exist in our society. At nakikita natin yung isang manifestation doon is yung, is yung violence, no? Yung violence against women and girls na um, pre-existing and it's, uh, and it's being exacerbated in a context of um, humanitarian crisis. And um, if we consider this, no, in our humanitarian work, in our community outreach, uh, if we are integrating gender equality into our outreach uh, programs, we we will be able to ensure no na ang ating mga actions and ating mga initiatives are inclusive, they are effective, efficient, and um, empowering no um, sa mga kababaihan and the community in general. And so, who is responsible for integrating this gender equality perspective in our community outreach and humanitarian work? Walang iba kundi tayong lahat. Okay. Um, hindi lang siya responsibility ng mga social workers, ng, uh, ng ating mga humanitarian workers, no? but this is a shared responsibility because lahat tayo affected din dito. Okay? And um, when we integrate, no, just to highlight the importance of integrating gender sa ating community outreach and humanitarian work, um, napaka-importante no, para ma-preserve natin yung mga gains na, na, na panalunan na ng ating mga kababaihan, no? yung mga pre-crisis gains. Ibig sabihin kung meron na tayong established ng policies no? to ensure a uh, protection of women and girls um, both in development and humanitarian context. So, uh, pag nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, gender dense no? sa ating mga programa, napapreserve natin yung mga ganun efforts. And then we are able to, of course, um, achieve our desired outcomes no, for individual women, girls, men, and boys. At dito talaga natin nahahighlight ano yung goal, no? ano yung value of each of these members ng community. And then we will be able, of course, to reach the marginalized and vulnerable groups, maintain and strengthen our resilience. And of course, um, actually, crisis also presents an opportunity for us to, you know, to reverse yung mga pre-existing gender inequality. And um, how to do that? Of course, meron tayong tinatawag na gender analysis. So, yung present ko sa inyo na data on the first part of my presentation, that was actually the result of the gendered um, uh, assessment and analysis that we have conducted for COVID-19. Kaya natin nakikita no, ano yung specific impact or effect ng COVID-19 on the quarantine measures sa mga kababaihan, kalalakihan, batang bamay at batang lalaki because of this... Um, process no and this is very important no? in any um programmatic work or in any outreach program that we are doing ano yung gender analysis so um it's basically um it's really about good programming no uh, good planning as well so it looks at the relationship ng kababaihan ng uh, batang babae men and boys and we consider no yung kanilang uh, respective roles access to and control of resources and the constraints that each group faces relative to the other. So, hindi lang ito about collecting um, sex and age and disability disaggregated data, but also an analysis of how, you know, yung, how this uh, situation changes, how the roles, for instance, and expectations of men and women, girls and boys changes uh, before and after the crisis situation. And, um, 
of course, uh, meron tayong guide on how to do this. I will not be able to discuss in detail all about this because it will entail a separate training no, to do gender analysis. But just to let you know, no, no there are resources available on uh, conducting gender analysis. And this is very important when we plan for our community outreach. Um, these are also available no, uh, online. You can access this. Um, uh, I, I can give you later on the, the, the links to these uh, resources that you can access. But essentially, ito yung four um, you know, major steps that we do when we conduct a gender analysis. So, of course, you find information that is already available. You don't need to, to do a, you know, a new survey. To, of course, you can do that if you have the resources. But uh, basically, when we do this, especially in the context of an emergency, we just make use of... Um, existing data no sa ating municipio sa ating community and uh, we collect no the sex age and disability data but as i've said hindi yun nag-stop doon no we have to analyze no yung ating na collect na sad uh, sex and age disaggregated data in terms of you know ano yung mga vulnerabilities nitong uh, specific population na ito and um, we analyze it no and there's also a tool on how to do that so um, meron namang mga guides na existing na we can use no to, to help us in doing this and then of course we do the recommendation in terms of how are we going to go about our um, humanitarian work or our outreach program based on the data and the analysis that we have conducted so you can so essentially yung key messages that i wanted to share to you for the second part of my presentation is on the uh, sex and age segregated data so as i've said it doesn't stop uh, doon sa pag-collect lang, no? it has to be analyzed no? in terms of the different um, needs and vulnerabilities of women, girls, men, and boys, and other subset of vulnerable groups. And of course, uh, we have to ensure participation. No? When we do our planning, when we do our needs assessment, uh, until the implementation and monitoring of whatever um, activities or interventions that we wanted to, uh, we wanted to do or in our um, outreach program, no? We have to ensure the participation of um, the affected population, no? So we have to ensure that local capacities and diverse groups, uh, including women's groups, youth group, faith-based organizations, persons with disabilities organizations, are, are strengthened. And they are really part of the process, no? Um, I think this is really, really crucial when we do our community outreach for it to be effective, um, efficient, and sustainable, okay? So as I've said, ito yung references that you can um, access later on. I will definitely share this presentation. And um, you can access the, 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 the one I discussed a while ago no, in gender analysis and the gender analysis tool. So this is the reference that we're using, especially in the humanitarian work that we are doing. Um, this is usually the references that we are using. So you can access it free online. Okay. So that's the second part of my presentation. And now we go to the last one. And I think this is the, um, the, um, the, the more of the application of those um, previous um, discussions that I had. So, okay, um, I will be, uh, this is the last part, so this will not take that much time. Um, I will just be sharing with you, you know, yung mga innovative approaches that we have adopted for us to effectively reach to our target population. So in my case, um, uh, women and girls, but uh, I will be focusing more on young people. No? So of course, uh, that includes women and girls as well. Um, so early this year, just to give you a quick background, no, um, kulang talaga tayo sa data. No? Kulang tayo sa data on young people. How are they doing? Uh, ano yung situation nila? What are the specific challenges that young people are facing during um, the lockdown period, especially during March? No? So what we did was we conducted a crowdsourcing activity through Facebook because this is where um, a lot of young people are. Now, despite the digital inequalities that uh, young people are facing, this generation no, of young people are still very much connected to, to the internet. No, um, So we... We banked on that. We maximized the presence of young people in, in the internet. And um, uh, ang, yung aming ginawa na um, crowdsourcing activity, basically we just asked, what are you, uh, ano yung mga challenges that we are facing now? So ang result ng aming um, ginawang crowdsourcing, 
it was like a mini research that we had conducted no um it all it revealed what we already know no actually alam naman na natin ito it's just that wala lang talaga din tayong data but is a major finding namin doon is that you know uh young people can be an important resource in mitigating risk and community outreach um intervention so yung mga kabataan they're already taking action it's just that kulang din sa support no how are we going to um highlight no, yung role nila sa kanilang communities kung kulang din sa support. So, madami silang initiatives, as you can see, maybe you have seen um, in, in social media, how young people are taking action to address uh, different issues that we are facing in the community and also assisting um, our uh, frontliners no, in addressing COVID-19 in communities. So, so as I've said, no, um, Despite the challenges that we have faced with COVID-19, the result of our crowdsourcing really showed the tremendous potential of young people you know, to effect change. No, so and we did it as a result of that um, crowdsourcing activity. We uh, developed this national campaign. So it's an intergenerational. Oh, yeah, nang kulog. <laughs> it's an intergenerational. Um, dialogue campaign of young people with key government officials. No? So it's a platform um, to reach a lot of young people. So ang tinarget namin nun is 10,000 per dialogue, but eventually at at, um, at the end of our campaign, we have reached a total of at least 1.5 million uh, young people through our social media platforms. Um, so this is one of our um, innovative approaches on um, engaging youth, uh, the youth population. And um, essentially, this is a platform you know, for young people to really um, demand for accountability to our government officials in terms of um, really focusing on the issues that young people are facing, to really address these issues. It also gave them a you know, uh, an opportunity to connect, no, to connect these young people to existing mechanisms, to existing services and information to support their development and needs in this current context. And lastly, this is a um, this is a campaign that uh, supports the innovative approaches or innovative solutions of young people on different issues. So. Kab kabayanihan, uh, essentially, it means kabataan and bayanihan. So we combine that word, uh, those two words, no? and essentially it means uh, young people working together to achieve a common goal. Um, so we have developed these themes based, again, on the crowdsourcing activity that we have conducted. So yung issues ng mga kabataan, naglalaro siya doon sa limang theme. No? Una-una, of course, the health, then uh, economic opportunities, then we have education. Um, we have as well human rights, yeah? no? Kasi madaming human rights violations that were uh, nananyari, no? During the lockdown period, lalo ng mga kabataan na, na nahuhuli sa curfew, they were made to perform sexual acts and, you know, unimaginable human rights violations to young people. And then, of course, nandun din yung uh, usapin ng pangpapayapaan. So, these are very relevant as well sa uh, kabataan in Mindanao. Yun. So, um, what we did, of course, we invited, um, you know, uh, key government officials. So for our Kabayanian sa Kalisugan, um, we invited USEC, um, si USEC natin, uh, Verheri, ng Department of Health. And then a lot of people asked questions and we documented it in a very youth-friendly way. So we documented the dialogue in a graphic, you know, graphic documentation such as this. Um, madaming na discuss na issues no, including yung of course COVID nineteen, uh, yung access to sexual and reproductive health and rights ng ating mga kabataan. Uh, may lumabas din na question on HIV. You know anything related to health affecting young people. So it was a very productive um, dialogue. No, kasi we are really um, connecting these young people, these youth organizations to to our um, uh, key government officials. Sorry. Um, wait lang po ha. Double check ko lang kasi baka todo dal dal ako tapos hindi pala nakikita. Okay, nakikita niyo naman po ang aking presentation, no? Yes? Okay, and then um, the second uh, topic that we have is uh, which is very relevant as well to young people is yung uh, 
usapin ng pangkabuhayan, no? economic opportunities for young people. So, invited BPI and TESDA and, and a young entrepreneur no, to discuss about you know, ways for young people to access training, um, online livelihood training, and other um, economic opportunities. Then, of course, um, education, no? as also mentioned by Jess kanina, yung uh, natigil yung mga pag-aaral, uh, paano mag access uh, you know, given the limitations on, on technology. So, we invited DepEd as well to speak about that. And also, napakagandang topic dito yung comprehensive sexuality education, kung paano natin siya implement given the um, current um, limitations posed by COVID-19. Then, we also have human rights. We invited um, uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Karen Dupit to, you know, to discuss about the uh, the issues of young people pertaining to human rights. So, napakaganda nung dialogue, no? Very, uh, I think a lot of CEU students, um, especially social work students, were able to participate on this, the J-SWAP. So, I, I really appreciate um, CEU's support um, for this um, campaign. And then, um, lastly, no, yung sa usaping pangkapayapaan. So, invited... Uh, um, a speaker from BARM, no, yung head ng uh, Bangsamoro Youth Commission. And it was also very timely kasi that was the International Youth Day. And then that was also the time na nag-launch yung Bangsamoro ng kanilang Bangsamoro Youth uh, Commission. So that was the equivalent of the National Youth Commission. So, um, at uh, of course, no, maganda itong dialogue. We are reaching young people. As I've said, we've reached 1.5 million young people on this. Pero hindi doon natitigil yun, no? Ang gandang pakinggan na, uh, okay, nag-dialogue tayo, na-reach natin mga, mga young people. So ano ngayon? So there has to be some complete action um, in supporting um, these innovative ideas of young people. So that's why we've also launched the youth grants, no? So we've opened this to all youth organizations, um, formal or informal, no, for them to be able to access um, funding from UNFPA um, to support their innovative um, solutions to issues uh, pertaining to health, education, economic opportunities, human rights, peace and security. So, ito yung ongoing na uh, um, intervention that we are doing now. So, we will be providing mentoring and coaching um, as well, no, sa ating mga uh, napili na limang youth organization who will be implementing their innovative approaches to resolve these issues um, mentioned. So we were really amazed and we were quite overwhelmed no, sa dami ng entries that we have received. So ganun kadami um, ang initiatives ng ating mga kabataan and, and I think that is something that outreach programs can also support. No? And um, yeah, just to provide you uh, some references no, uh, that you can use, especially when you are um, dealing with young people, uh, especially your students as well. No? So, um, madami tayong references. I've also compiled a list of youth-friendly resources that you can access. And then, uh, on the part of UNFPA, we have de uh, developed this um, website no, uh, where young people and even every one of us can access. Ito yung rh-care. Uh, that info. So, meron dong page for young people, my page on gender-based violence, my page on um, maternal health, and then my page on family planning. So, meron siyang chatbot, 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 <laughs> chatbot feature where you can uh, directly ask questions and um, reach out to service providers you know, for your questions or services that you wanted to avail. And then we also have a lot of information. Um, um, you know, and services that you can access through this website. Okay, so I think that's just it for my um, my presentation this afternoon. So just to conclude, no, um, itong um, reaching out and engaging um, young people and women, no, this is not something new. It's just that we have to innovate and we have to think of um, different ways, similar to what I have just presented. Um, especially during this context. And we have to always remember no, that uh, when we engage women and girls in, and, and young people, especially in our communities, um, all interventions that we are doing, especially when they have this ownership no, and we partner with them, will always be effective and sustainable. So, okay, that's the end of my presentation. And I hope you, uh, you, you learned something from it.
Okay. So thank I will you now very open much. the floor. Yes. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> thank you very, thank you, very, thank you okay. very much, uh, Professor Atara. So actually, Dr. Lumpas, ang major takeaway ko talaga dito is yung sinabi ni Professor on on capacity building um, mm-hmm. locally. So kahit tayo dito sa CEU, di ba, very important sa university ang capacity building. Kaya walang puknat ang mm-hmm. mga webinars, di ba, ang sisipag naman ng mga nasa community. So mm-hmm. at this juncture, we will be proceeding to our question and answer. Yes, there are uh, several questions being asked by some of our viewers. Uh, probably after they have uh, heard uh, Professor Otara, they were also overwhelmed by the uh, uh, so many things that uh, they can do in the field of uh, community outreach. So much connected in, the, in protecting uh, especially the, the teenagers and, uh, and women. And uh, let's go to the first question in the, in the chat. Oh, there's one from, uh, yes, uh, ma'am. Uh, go ahead, sir, go ahead. Uh, it's from Workplace. Uh, someone is asking, uh, uh, Sir Vincent Trinidad is asking if there is a law that provides gender equality, including the LGBTQ plus. Mm-hmm. Uh, ang pinaka main uh, reference natin no, or pinaka anchor natin sa ngayon, is yung ating Magna Carta of Women. So, it's a very comprehensive law uh, detailing all the, you know, the rights of women, um, protecting, um, upholding the rights of uh, women and girls. Um, but for um, specific to non-discrimination, I think it, that's still an ongoing um, discussion no, sa ating legislative bodies. But um, for now, very concrete is the Magna Carta of Women. Of course, other um, laws as well now pertaining to the protection of women and girls. Okay, thank and you yes. very much. So the answer for that is yes. <laughs> Meron naman tayo. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, for our next question, may I, Sir uh, Dr. Lumpas? So uh, yes. for our next question, um, with the study that you had on SAD, um, mm-hmm. any outputs with regards to youth with disabilities? Yes, actually, um, there is a specific result as well on um, persons with disability. So, um, hindi ko lang siya nasama sa presentation, no? but um, ang isa sa major finding as well is, as expected, no? um, mas mahirap yung access ng persons with disabilities, mas doble pa no? yung hirap na, na, nararana, na naranasan nila compared to women and girls without disability. So, um, we can share as well. I think the, the report is publicly available. I can definitely share it with CEU later to, to, for, for you to have a more, you know, um, comprehensive um, perspective about the, the situation. There's also a result pertaining to older uh, persons. So, ating elderly, ano yung naging uh, impact nito sa kanila. So, um, yeah, we can share that later. Thank you so All right, much. Thank you. That will be helping us a lot. Any uh, any other questions? Uh, I have a, I have a personal question <laughs> that uh, yes, I'd like sir. to ask Professor Otara. Uh, it's about the, the first part of her talk. Uh, mm. how, how can female teenagers better protect themselves from uh, sexual assault during this pandemic? Lalo na yung mga talagang nakakulong sila sa bahay. Sabi mo nga, uh, it, they're together with the potential pe- perpetrators. How, what mm. what can they can can they do? Napakahirap na tanong niyan, sir. <laughs> so, totoo lang, it's an ongoing, um, you know, uh, advocacies and work that we are doing. Kasi, um, unang-una sa lahat, syempre, uh, bata, no? Um, meron din, may power relations between the, the, you know, the adults, the perpetrator, and the child. And especially, no, dun din sa data na pinakita sa atin ni Sir Jess kanina, most of the violence that's happening to our young people are committed by persons that they know, committed by people that they thought are, um, they thought will protect them, no? Like their parents or relatives. So actually, madami namang our recommendations on that, no? So I think one of, one of the things na, Lagi din namin talagang ina-advocate and we are working closely with with uh, the Department of Education is really the 
the implementation no, ng comprehensive sexuality education. So that's just one area. So kasi yung comprehensive sexuality education, it's really about life skills. It's not it's not about um, uh, teaching people how to do sex or something like that. No, contrary to the popular belief or misconceptions ng ating mga ng, ng general society na no, the comprehensive sexuality education is really about life skills no there it's teaching young people at a very early age about bodily autonomy about how to protect themselves safe touch bad touch you know those uh, those uh, life skills that they can uh, bring with them when they grow old and it helps them to really understand um, peer pressures power relations etc so um, that's one way no another is of course um uh, to, to raise the awareness, no, yung ating mga advocacy um, work at the community level, to raise the awareness of uh, the, the prevalence of um, sexual, I mean, different, not just sexual violence, but different forms of violence committed against women and girls. And that involves a multidisciplinary, multi-sectoral effort to really, um, you know, to ensure that the community is aware that this is a crime, that this is not just a private um uh hindi siya private lang naganap no na it's within the family you no know, this is a crime and i think thirdly is to um really ensure that service providers as well no are equipped with the knowledge skills and attitude on how to deal with these issues so madami kasing uh, cases na hindi nagsusumbong din yung bata dahil takot din siya kasi pagdating sa service provider very insensitive no na eh ano ba kasi ng suot mo but kalumabas you know you know parang the, the culture of victim blaming is still very strong so i think those three are just some of the entry points no, on how we can ensure that um girls are protected or or children are protected um from all forms of violence so madami pa pong paraan but yun lang siguro muna i share ko <laughs> Thank you very much for those uh, three concrete things uh, that can be done. <laughs> I think, uh, uh, yes, at this point, we will be giving uh, Professor Otara her uh, certificate. Yes. Um, yes. For, um, for, for other questions, po pala, if meron pa, they can always reach out to me at otara at unfpa.org. So um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Otara. And to show our appreciation, uh, we would like to award this certificate. Uh, let me read the citation. Centro Scolar University, Manila, Makati, and Malolos. Teachers empowering approach as community helper, helpmates or teach, and the support personnel outreach team or support awards the Certificate of Appreciation to Professor Rio Grace Otara for sharing her knowledge and expertise as resource speaker during the webinar on new perspectives in outreach engagements with the topic of the role of women and youth in community empowerment, held on October 3, 2020 via CEU Workplace, Facebook, and YouTube. Signed, Dr. Marita, Margarita E. Gray, President Teach, Ms. Jennifer Queta, President of Support, Dr. Lolita Pablo, the Head of the Community Outreach Department, and Dr. Carlito B. Olaer, Vice President for Student Affairs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you once again, uh, Professor Otara. Uh, we would like to request uh, uh, all members and officers of uh, Teach and Support to please uh, click the link in the comment section of uh, StreamYard for the evaluation. Thank you very much. And uh, also, we would like to thank uh, our previous uh, speaker, Mr. Jesus Farr, for sharing with us uh, valuable insights about uh, community outreach. And now, let us all watch and listen to the closing remarks of the Vice President for Student Affairs, CEU Manila. Let's give a warm round of applause to Dr. Carlito B. Olaer. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, I really would like to thank uh, Professor Rio and uh, Sir uh, 
SOS, but uh, I think that is not really my part to to do the uh, thank you uh, messages. I think it's uh, Dr. Cecilia. Yes, I'm here to give the closing remarks. So uh, allow me to uh, to share with you my um, what I prepared for this afternoon. When I was asked by uh, Dr. Pablo to give the closing remarks for this webinar on new perspectives in outreach uh, engagement, I was really hesitant to accept. Not because I knew little about the subject matter, but I am maybe because I am not also uh, as engaged no, with the issues, advocating for the rights of children or the role of women and youth in community empowerment. But I tried to uh, examine my, my first reaction. I, I found some uh, justifications for my feelings. Well, I am not a social worker. I am not an advocate for children and women's rights. And I told myself, that's a lousy excuse, right? Am I not part of a bigger world? Am I not my brother's and sister's uh, keeper? That is the question that I have to answer and for you too, my colleagues. So I accepted the invitation to compel me to be here today, to learn. I didn't have the slightest idea that the reason I gave would lead me to make a complete turnaround from a non-committal to a newfound engaging stance, especially when I started reading literature and prayed hard for inspiration. I encountered Marcel Prost when I was Googling and he said, the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new lands, but seeing with your eyes. The title of our webinar is all about new perspectives. There is wisdom to what Marcel was saying. We have drafted and conducted community outreach activities for years now. We have already sought new lands with the different communities we had worked with. This time, we are given a chance to continue our journey of discovery by seeing with our eyes, which simply means understanding and feeling why do we do all this, especially during this pandemic period. Listening to our speakers, uh, Mr. Jesus Far and Professor Rio Grace Otara, they walked us through the market to pick which issue do we need to answer resolve or respond to. Following the SDG goals or the sustained development goals, and there are 17 of them, which uh, as mentioned by Professor Rio, uh, hopefully the problems will solve in 2030. Well, for picking, we have gender inequality and employment under represented community groups like women, youth and our eyes are seeing more the minors the seniors the poor persons with disabilities the lgbt group and the real question is what have we done to help them get out from their plights then maybe we need to hear again a voice from the West. Maybe this time I can quote uh, Theodore Roosevelt. This country will not be a good place for any of us to live, to live in, unless we make it a good place for all of us. Or maybe from the East, from Buddha. We are not put on this earth for ourselves, but are placed here for each other. If you are there always for others, then in time of need, someone will be there for you. 
Our webinar today only echoes a piece of what the world decries. Hunger, poverty, inequality, violence, injustice, unhealthy practices. The list continues crying out for change, emancipation, and freedom. Any injustice done or any inhuman condition plaguing our communities actually empower us to act, to find answers and solutions if we truly care. But Mahatma Gandhi reminded all of us, be the change you want to see in the world. Can I change the world? Mother Teresa said, I cannot change the world alone, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. Our webinar today is like casting a stone across the waters to create many ripples. If each one of us cast a stone, I'm sure we will not only create ripples, we will create waves, tsunamis for that matter, to change the landscape. And our landscapes are our homes, our school, our communities. As parents, as teachers, as neighbors, as friends. And that is within our power. That power is our very own empowerment to engage, especially during this pandemic. So what is our takeaway on this? In any community outreach activity that we do, let us find what meaning uh, can we put or give in doing that particular activity. That meaning becomes meaningful only when we make a choice to engage or not to engage with our full heart and mind into it. And the voice of the lists and the last and the lost be ours. Let us be the voice. And this is actually what the Lord exhorts us to do. Amen, I say to you. Whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you so much, Dr. Oler. Your words truly lives a mark in our hearts. I agree with you, sir, when you say that today we are given the chance to feel and understand what we can do to others, okay? So at this point in time, may we give our heartfelt thanks to those who made this webinar possible. Thank you to all the proactive working committees, the chairpersons and members. Thank you to the three co-chairpersons of this event, Engineer Jennifer Santos, Community Outreach Program Advisor, School of Science and Technology. Mam Gemma M. Gordes, Community Outreach Program Coordinator, CEU Makati. Mam Luningning O. Marcelino, Community Outreach Program Coordinator, CEU Malolos. Thank you to our overall chairperson for this webinar, Dr. Margarita E. Gray, President of Teach Teachers Empowering Approach as Community Helpmates. And our big thanks to the endless support of our consultants, Dr. Lodito Pablo, the head of the Community Outreach Department, Dr. Carlito B. Oleer, the Vice President for Student Affairs, Dr. Maria Cristina D. Padolina, CEO President and Chief Academic Officer, and our endless thanks to our guest speakers for this afternoon, Sir Jesus Par and Professor Otara, for sharing your expertise and all your knowledge to all of us here. Again, thank you very much. 
Together, let us see the CEUV. Mabuhay ka, mahal namin, pamantasan, mapuhi sa nakilang sentro eskolar. Ika'y dambana ng pag-ibig sa bayan, at aghang na sa riyang matagumpay. Kapag ang diwa ng iyong mga hibig, umago na sa puso't ibig, Sabay-sabay na ipasisigawan, mabuhay ka dakilang sentro eskolar. Mabuhay ka mahal naming pamantasan, papuri sa dakilang sentro eskolar. Ika'y dambana ng pag-ibig sa bayan, at ang pangasariyang matagumpay. Centro Escolar 